something was going to happen. Something wonderful. It just never gets old, does it? There you go. <laughs> G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode, if you want to call it that, uh, of Talk Nerdy to Me. Here we are on another wonderful Wednesday night. The curfew is still in place, the lockdown still in place, but, hey, hopefully you're joining us for a bit of fun, frolics, and a nerdy talk. And as always, I have to introduce my co-hosts. We've got Michelle joining us already, which is fantastic. Uh, my lads, how are we tonight? We'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're both doing non-verbal communication. Oh, um, um, is well there you go. <laughs> Hang on, don't talk over each other. You go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we're here. Can we're we... good. It's Wednesday. It's what can I say? Hump day, yep. apparently. Yeah. Hump day. Yep. And uh, let's move on to the year. So, MPS, what year have we got? We have gone back in time to 1971. And now what happened in 1971? Well, January 5, the first ever one-day international cricket match uh, between Australia and England played at the MCG. So there you go. There's one bit of sporting trivia that I dug out. Um, in actual fact, 1971 was not a great year in a lot of cases. These are, are very hard to find facts of what actually, what good was happening in the world. Uh, but I think times were a changing as was said in the song. Um, one thing that was a little bit negative was in Britain, Rolls-Royce goes bankrupt and is nationalised. Uh, Apollo 14 lands on the moon. Uh, you'd be happy, dude, that there's no airplane stuff this year. Uh, this, Thank, this particular year. Um, Thank you. Evil Knievel sets a world record and jumps 19 cars in uh, Ontario and California. I think he goes on to crack about 27 ribs. Um, yep. Uh, in 1971, there were three partial solar eclipses and two total lunar eclipses. So a lot of stuff happening in the sky that year. The fight of the century, uh, boxer Joe Fraser versus, uh, defeats Muhammad Ali in a 15-round unanimous decision at Madison Square Gardens. Um, for those coffee lovers, Starbucks, a major coffee house and outlet, in, is now worldwide, founded in the, the state of Washington. Uh, the Soviet Union launches, oh, I can never get these foreign names, uh, Salyut 1. Uh, Mars probe program Mars 2 is launched by the Soviet Union. The first e-book that is actually noted, uh, Michael S. Hart posts the first e-book, a copy of the United States Declaration of Independence on the University of Illinois um, mainframe computer, The Origin of Project Gutenberg. And maybe that's Project Steve Gutenberg. I don't know, but it's still Project Gutenberg. And still an e-book too. Uh, vote to write. The 26th Am Amendment in the US Constitution, formally certified by President Richard Nixon, lowers the voting age from 21 to 18. Apollo 15 uh, is launched. Mr. Tickle, the first of the Mr. Men series books, is published. Jackie Stewart becomes Formula One World Drivers Champion in the Tyrrell uh, 003 Cosworth. Here you go, Jeff, I one for you. Trams in Ballarat cease to run. Oh, well, that was not so good then, is it? Um, <laughs> easy come, easy go. Uh, Walt Disney World opens in Orlando, Florida. The Soviet Mars 3 lander reaches the surface of Mars, transmits for a few seconds and goes silent. Uh, it's the first spacecraft to reach the planet. Uh, and December 30 of 1971, the first McDonald's opens in Australia, in Yaguna, Sydney. I think that's how you pronounce it. And that's all I've got in terms of what actually happened that was good in the world. Very good. Jeffro. Yeah, well, uh, my first one is that uh, in the UK, they had the first ever, ever postal strike. And I thought, hang on, this rings a bell because I remember uh, the goodies did uh, radio goodies and they also had the pirate post office. And I thought, well, what if that episode came out sort of before or after? So I looked it up and apparently that episode uh, was broadcast the month before. So maybe they got a bit of an idea from watching the goodies. 
But uh, anyway, the postal strike lasted 47 days and eventually um, they, they caved in. So, uh, yeah, the Pirate Postal Service, I mean, it could have been a thing. Um, also, uh, a lot of people are aware that in the UK they actually have uh, uh, licences that they've actually got to pay for to be able to uh, uh, listen to the radio and watch TV. Now, I think they still have um, uh, TV licences, but the radio licences were abolished um, in this year. So in comparison with Australia, uh, our radio licence was abolished in 1964. So uh, very much late to the party, the, uh, the UK on that one. It was also uh, the year that um, UK decimalised. So they used to have pounds, shilling and pence sort of, and you had to sort of do a lot of calculations to sort of work out how it all worked out. So they decimalised, and now everything's in hundreds. Um, an interesting one I found was that uh, eight members of the Welsh Language Society went on trial for destroying English language signs in Wales. So really dedicated. Um, and this all came about because in the 1960s, uh, England started making the signs bilingual. So obviously someone had had enough and said, well, you know, Wales for, for the Welsh and um, started tearing down the signs. So, and then got, of course, they got nicked. Uh, this was the year that um, uh, the UK decided to opt out of the space race. Probably a good idea. Um, but I don't think they're really in it all that much anyway. Uh, this one's another interesting story. There was a show jumper who was stripped of his victory at the, uh, the British Show Jumping Derby because he made a V sign. Now, um, apparently uh, he took it to uh, the tribunal two, two days later and he said, well, I'm doing the peace sign. But apparently he'd had a few words with one of the judges earlier and it may have been, well, that other one. But <laughs> they managed to um, give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, he, got his, uh, he got his award back. So uh, well done for him for pulling off that little stunt. Speaking of uh, uh, things that happened in 1971, I reckon that's just an absolute classic. There's a line and a half. We've got a few bursts in, um, in 1971 yeah. as well, so I could add that to the list. Um, <laughs> this was also the year the British Army started destroying roads in uh, Ireland to try and separate uh, Northern Ireland uh, away. Uh, so that was um, pretty much a drastic security measure that they did. And in terms of people born, I'll just list them off and hopefully you'll know some of these names. Uh, Charlie Booker, Rachel Weiss, David Coulthard, throw that one in for Carol, uh, Ewan McGregor, David Tennant, Paul Bettany, Stella McCartney, Mackenzie's Crook, Sasha Bowen Cohen, and Dido, or Dido, depending on uh, how you pronounce that one. Uh, the films that we saw in this year, uh, another one of Carol's favourites, The Abominable Dr. Fives, uh, Kubrick's Clockwork Orange, and there was a bunch of whole uh, TV shows that were turned into movies. So we had Please Sir, Dad's Army, and On the Buses, all, all showing in the cinemas that year. Uh, we saw Diamonds Are Forever from James Bond, and there's a whole truckload of horror movies that I'm not going to go into, but uh, just two examples are Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde and uh, Lust for a Vampire. And uh, finally, the Monty Python movie, and now for something completely different. And then TV, we saw The Two Ronnies, Bless This House, Upstairs, Downstairs, Jason King, The Persuaders, Parkinson, The Boot, The Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, and The Edward Woodward Hour, leaving it off on a really high note. And that was it for the UK in 71. Far out. Uh, I also know who David Coulthard is, so it's not just for Carol. So uh, oh. there you go. Uh, and The Persuaders, I actually think, is one of the shows that had one of the best opening themes uh, you could get for any TV series. It was very, very impressive. In terms of movies, a couple of men have actually been mentioned already. So the Andromeda Strain actually did come out in 1971. Um, it was obviously, you know, ironically, very covid uh, centric regarding to a killer virus that's just impacting everybody everywhere. Um, it was actually quite an interesting film, but uh, as a lot of people said, uh, it was considered good but forgettable. And of course, science fiction movies in 1971 were all depressing. Nothing was positive, nothing was happy. And uh, the Andromeda strain, where it's killing everybody, uh, yeah, kind of like uh, fit into that mode. Um, the Omega Man, which of course was a remake of The Last Man on Earth with Charlton Heston running around with all these vampire dudes. 
as we discussed in an episode of Sci-Fi Zone last year, it's actually the closest representation to the book, uh, which is what it's all based on, which is uh, kind of groovy. So if you get a chance to check out The Omega Man, one of those movies where you're in a really good mood and then you put it on and you walk out and you go, you know what, now I'm depressed. Um, <clears throat> In terms of other fantastic movies that came out the year, THX 1138. So a lot of people who went and saw Star Wars on 1977 said, oh, George Lucas's first sci-fi movie, got to go back and check that out. And it is so unrelated to Star Wars, it's hard to believe it was even made by the same person. Totally uh, bizarre. It's almost like wacky tobacco stuff. You've got to be smoking something pretty high to uh, to actually appreciate it. But um, you know, that was the, the theatrical version of the film that came out when he was doing student films back in the 60s. So, uh, you know, good old THX 1138. Very, very cool. If you like big white walls and bald-headed people, uh, male and female, it's definitely the movie to check out. Uh, Jeffro mentioned The Clockwork Orange. The interesting thing about that, which we also mentioned in Sci-Fi Zone last year, is that Stanley Kubrick based it on the book uh, that was missing, the American version, that was missing the 21st chapter where Alex is redeemed. So in the American version where they took that chapter out, Alex stays as a bad guy, and that's the version that they stuck with. So uh, if you've read the book from the UK version, you'll be going, hang on, where's this extra bit? And that's the reason why it's not there. One movie that did come out, the old thing, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. So after Beneath the Planet of the Apes, people thought, that's it, the franchise is now finished. They can't do any more done and dusted. So what do you do? You go back in time and effectively start all over again. Mm -hmm. And all of those five movies that came out in the 60s and the 70s, I think Escape Rates is number two. It's absolutely fantastic film. What happens when a spaceship lands on Earth and it's full of apes, apes who can talk for crying out loud. So uh, it's actually almost a good representation of what would happen in real life, uh, which I thought was actually very, very cool, well worth checking out. And, of course, in Japan, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Toho guys weren't slacking off this year either. The good old Godzilla versus Hedera was out and about, so the smashing up of Japanese cities was still in vogue at that point, among among a number of other movies, but that's all I'm going to stick with uh, so far. So there you go. Uh, anything you two need to finish up with? <clears throat> no. Yeah, no, I will. I will start with uh, TV uh, with film. Uh, three other films of note that came out that year: Dirty Harry, one of his first ones, came out. Uh, Duel, the chase between the car and the truck, which is one of my favourites. I love that film. With very little dialogue. Uh, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, was released as well. TV, a couple of notes, mostly Australian, uh, except for this one, Columbo. Columbo came out that year. Uh, the Return of Ultraman, um, Young Talent Time started, and so did Hey Hey, It's Saturday. Um, Claire's asked an interesting question. Was Planet of the Apes the first franchise to do a prequel? I don't know if you would class it as a prequel because you need um, – they get the ship from the Planet of the Apes movie, they somehow fix it up and then launch it and they end up going back in time. So, I don't know, it's a tricky one if it's classed as a prequel or not because prior to that you don't know who Z um, Zero and Cornelius are. So that's a, we have to save that question for another time. We'll try and delve into it a bit further. So it's sort it of is. Would it huh? be classed as a reboot? No, no, because it's a continuation of the, of the storyline. So, uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, okay. it is – so chronologically, it's a prequel, but the characters are from a sequel, effectively. So, um, oh, I know what it is. You ready? What? You ready, Jeffrey? That's from yeah. the Kelvin timeline. Yeah. Yeah, I knew you <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very good. Continue uh, on. <clears throat> all right, just quickly, uh, some more births from that year. Jeremy Renner, uh, who plays um, uh, in the Avengers. Michael C. Hall, who was in Dexter. Sean Astin was. Um, uh, Lord of the Rings, um, Alan Tydak, uh, Nathan Fillion, uh, Benedict Wong, who was in um, uh, Doctor Doctor Strange, uh, Marky Mark Wahlberg, Chris Tucker, fifty million dollars. Who do you think you are, Chelsea Clinton? Uh, and singer Tiffany, um, she's not alone anymore. And Christina Applegate. And the only noticeable death of that year, which was Jim Morrison, lead singer of the Doors. Um. Jeff Rowe, here's a question for you. Mr. Squiggle, is that around in uh, that time? You do know that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, it, um, it was around for about 50 years, so uh, I'd say it was certainly um, around and probably started in the 60s, I think. Very cool. Very good. So that's 1971 all wrapped up in a nice little bow. So I think we should uh, wrap this up. Any final words from my lads? Don't try and remake us. We're classics. <laughs> That would be yeah, imagine that a remake of Talk Nudie to me with three other dudes, just just like uh, and, and more successful than we are, too. So there you go. See, see Jeffro's the classic, and I'm I'm the um the bootleg. 
So, you know, we talk action figures. <laughs> yes. Very, very, very good. So there you go. All right, so that's us for for tonight. Make sure you enjoy the rest of your week. So, join us next week for a bit of Flash Gordon a bit of, and a bit of Snyder action, and uh, we'll leave it at that. So in the interim, make sure you all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Stay nerdy. Okay. Er, boy. See ya. See ya.